this video, I'm going to um, review long division with you, and then we're going to show how to do it using polynomials. Um, so this is just kind of a reminder that 3 divided by 8 is another way we can read 3 eighths as a fraction. And so the number that's being divided is what we call the dividend, and what we're dividing by is the divisor. In long division, the divisor goes out front, then we have kind of this box, kind of like a radical without the check mark piece, and the dividend goes underneath. And what I ask myself is how many times does this number go into this number? Well, eight doesn't fit into three, it's bigger than three, so I'm actually gonna put a zero here. It doesn't fit in one complete time, but we can put a decimal here, and we can think about three as 3.0, as many zeros as I need, okay? So I'm gonna start here, I'm just gonna put a few here. So eight, now I'm gonna look at the next place value. So I'm gonna look at it as 30. So eight doesn't go into three, but does eight go into 30? Well, eight goes into 30 three times. Three times eight is 24. So I write that product underneath here and then I subtract. So I was just working with 30. Okay, so 30 minus 24 is six. And now I repeat the process. So eight doesn't fit into six, so we are gonna actually add another zero here to bring down, and I'm gonna repeat. Eight goes into 60 seven times. Seven times eight is 56, and then subtract. Again, eight doesn't fit into four, so I'm gonna bring another zero on down. Eight goes into 40 evenly five times. Five times eight is 40. So I'm done adding zeros and bringing them down once I get a remainder of zero. And if our remainder is zero, then this is the exact answer here. And this is called the quotient, the answer to a division problem, okay? All right, so let's try it with this one. So I'm gonna put um, the divisor out front and the dividend underneath, not 58, 53. Okay, so when it's a um, number that does fit in, so I look at the first digit first. So seven does not go into five, but seven goes into 53 seven times. I'm putting the seven over the three, not the five, because I had to go into the tenths place, or excuse me, the ones place to get it to go. So seven times seven is 49. Subtract, I get four. Um, if I don't want to continue into the decimal places, we can also write our remainder. Seven does not fit into four, and I'm out of places here. I've gone to the, the furthest place that's left. So I can write the remainder as a fraction. So my answer is seven, quotient, I should say, and I had a remainder of four. So we write the remainder here over whatever I was dividing by. So this is the remainder. This is the divisor. And this is the quotient, the whole thing, okay? So that's how I can write it and not do a decimal. I can just write it as a fraction. This is a lot easier to you guys because actually this one's gonna repeat forever. So this one, um, writing the remainder as a fraction is actually preferred, okay. All right, here, this is kind of a phrase that might be helpful in remembering this process, but draw the line and change the signs. So up here, every time I wrote the product, I was subtracting. Well, here I'm gonna be subtracting things with variables, and so what that does is it just changes all the signs. So let's draw this exactly like I was up here. So this is my um, dividend, so it's gonna go underneath. So x to the third plus three x squared plus three x plus two and I am dividing by x squared plus x plus one. So here's what I do. I just look at the leading terms, okay? And ask myself, x times what would give me x cubed? So x times x, excuse me, x squared times x would give me x cubed. So that's what I put up here. And now I do exactly what I was doing before in long division. I take this and multiply by the divisor and write the product underneath. So x times x squared is x cubed, x times x is x squared, x times one is x. So I'm gonna draw the line 
and change the signs. So I'm going to change all of these to subtract. Okay. So x cubed minus x cubed, zero. 3x squared minus x squared is 2x squared. 3x minus x is positive 2x. Anything left over, we just bring that down. And now I repeat. So now I'm looking at x squared and 2x squared. So x squared times what would give me 2x squared? Well, x squared times 2 would give me that. So a positive 2. Write it up here. 2 times everything and write the product down here. So 2 times x squared is 2x squared. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 1 is 2. Draw the line. Change the signs. So 2x squared minus 2x squared. 2x minus 2x. 2 minus 2. So when the remainder is 0, that means that this actually goes in evenly. So another way to think about that my answer is x plus 2. That's my quotient with no remainder. A way we can check this, right? The opposite of division is multiplication. So another way we can check it is x plus 2 times this should equal our dividend. So I'm going to check that over here. You don't have to do this every time. I'm just showing you that that is a possibility to see is your answer correct. Okay, so I'm going to distribute x times everything. So I get x cubed plus x squared plus x, and then 2 times everything. So plus 2x squared plus 2x plus 2. Combine like terms. And I got that same exact dividend, so that means my answer is correct. All right, let's try another example. So set up my long division, x plus 1 is the divisor, underneath x cubed plus 3x plus 5. All right, look at the leading terms as all. x times what gives me x to the third? x squared. So now take x squared, multiply by everything here, write the product underneath. So x squared times x, x cubed, x squared times 1 is x squared. All right, draw the line, change the signs. Okay, so this becomes subtraction. So, oh, sorry, that should be x cubed. There we go. Okay, so x cubed minus x cubed is gone. Now here, these are not like terms, right? I can't actually do that subtraction. So what I have is I have a negative x squared, a positive 3x, and a 5. So don't do the subtraction if it's unlike terms. Just write all of them next to each other. Okay, now we repeat x with negative x squared. So x times what would give us negative x squared? Negative x. Okay, so negative x times x is negative x squared. Negative x times 1 is negative x. Draw the line, change the sign. So right now they're subtraction, they're going to become addition. So negative x squared plus x squared gone. 3x plus x, 4x. Bring down the 5 x times what would equal 4x? Positive 4. 4 times all this gives us 4x plus 4. Okay, draw the line, change the signs. So 4x minus 4x gone. 5 minus 4 is 1. Okay, there is nothing I can multiply x by to equal 1, so I am done in this process. This is my remainder. So here's how we write our solution when our remainder is not zero. So we say um, our quotient is, so I'm going to do equals x squared minus x plus 4, and then plus our remainder of 1 over whatever we were dividing by, x plus 1. So this is how we write the remainder. So whatever I get on top plus the remainder over the divisor. Okay? Try another one. Okay, we have x to the fourth. Sorry, I gave myself a little, eh, that's probably fine. 2x cubed, 31x minus 4. x minus 4. All right, x times what equals x to the fourth? x to the third. Come through and multiply it. x to the third times x. x to the third times negative 4. 
Okay, draw the line, change the signs. Negative 2x cubed plus 4x cubed is positive 2x cubed. Repeat. x times what gives us 2x cubed? 2x squared. 2x squared times x gives us 2x cubed. And you've maybe noticed by now, but my leading terms I always want to cancel. That's how I know I'm doing it right. Negative 2x squared times negative 4. Negative 8x squared. Okay, draw the line, change the signs. Okay, notice again, I have x squared and 31x. Those are not like terms, so I'm just going to write them next to each other. Positive 8x squared, negative 31x minus 4. x times what is 8x squared? Well, that's 8x. Come through and multiply everything by 8x. 8x times x, 8x squared. 8x times negative 4, negative 32x. Draw the line, change the signs. Negative 31x plus 32x is positive 1x minus 4. x goes into x one time. 1 times this is x minus 4. Draw the line, change the signs. I get a remainder of 0. So this one, my solution or quotient is x plus 2x squared plus 8x plus 1 with no remainder. All right, last example here. We have 15x squared plus 8x minus 12 divided by 3x plus 1. All right, 3x and 15x squared. To get this to equal this, I have to multiply by 5x. 5x times 3x is 15x squared. 5x times 1 is 5x, okay? Draw the line, change the sign, subtract 8x minus 5x is 3x, bring down the negative 12. 3x times what equals 3x? That's just 1. So 1 times 3x, 1 times 1. Draw the line, change the sign. So here I get a remainder of negative 13, so my solution is 5x plus 1. And then the remainder, I can either write plus here or I can write minus since it's negative. And then I always put it over whatever I'm dividing by. Okay, so you can write it like this or you can get rid of that plus sign, which I prefer to do because it's just less signs and just write minus here when it's a negative remainder. Okay, all right guys, that is everything for this video. Thanks for watching.